Picture this, it's a cozy evening, the soft glow of the television casting a warm ambience across the room. You're nestled on the couch, a bowl of popcorn in your lap, and anticipation humming in the air. And then, it happens. The bugaloos burst onto the screen, transporting you to a whimsical world filled with catchy tunes, fantastical creatures, and adventures that left an indelible mark on your childhood. As you watched the 1970 TV series unfold, perhaps you found yourself captivated by the bugaloos themselves, those colorful, insect-inspired characters like Joy, IQ, Harmony, Courage, and Sparky. Or maybe it was the mischievous Benita Bazaar, with her outlandish costumes and wacky schemes, who etched herself into your memory. And who could forget those unforgettable tunes that echoed in your mind long after the show ended. But here's the kicker, the Bugaloos wasn't just about catchy songs and whimsy. It's a treasure trove of fascinating trivia and little known facts that will make you see the show in a whole new light. So, let's embark on a journey together through the enchanting world of the Bugaloos and uncover the unexpected, the curious, and the delightful. Get ready to be amazed by the hidden gems and behind-the-scenes stories that shaped this beloved series. But for now, let's turn back the clock and reminisce about your first encounter with these bud tastic characters and their unforgettable adventures. What stands out the most? What made you laugh or perhaps shed a nostalgic tear? Your Bugaloo's memories are the starting point for our voyage into this magical realm. So sit back, relax, and prepare to journey through time and trivia, all centered around one timeless TV show, The Bugaloos. Lose, lose, lose. The Bugaloos, a beloved 1970 TV series, emerged from the whimsical minds of Sid and Marty Croft, renowned for their innovative children's programming. Set in the magical realm of Tranquility Forest, the show followed the adventures of four anthropomorphic insect-like characters, Joy, IQ, Courage and Harmony, who formed the Bugaloos, a rock band with the dream of making it big. Each character possessed unique abilities, reflecting their insect identities, adding depth to their endearing personalities. The Bugaloos was distinctive for its blend of live action and puppetry, bringing the enchanting world of Tranquility Forest to life. The show's infectious music, catchy tunes, and psychedelic visuals perfectly captured the spirit of the 1970s, leaving an indelible mark on popular culture. The Bugaloo's enduring appeal continues to resonate with generations, a testament to its timeless charm and creativity. In sum, The Bugaloo's stands as a delightful chapter in the history of children's television, embodying the Croft brothers' imaginative storytelling and pushing the boundaries of what was possible in the realm of puppetry, and fantasy. Its quirky characters, memorable music, and fantastical world have left an enduring legacy in the hearts of viewers, making it a cherished classic in the annals of television. The Bugaloos, unveiling hidden villains and casting challenges in the vibrant world of 1970s TV series The Bugaloos, there's more than meets the eye. While the show is fondly remembered for its catchy tunes and whimsical characters, some intriguing facts lurk beneath the surface. One, Walker Edmiston's dual role. One fascinating tidbit about the Bugaloos is that Walker Edmiston, the voice behind the villainous Benita Bazaar, also lent his voice to Sparky the Firefly on occasion. This dual role showcased Edmiston's versatility as a voice actor, adding depth to the show's characters. Two, the unseen towns and villains. Behind the scenes, budget constraints thwarted ambitious plans for the series. The show's creators, the Croft brothers, envisioned different towns and villains that never made it to the screen. The Super Square was meant to be a mundane town inhabited by square-shaped people and their square-shaped pets. Downtown was to be a creepy underground lair, home to the militant Big Bummer and his general bumblers, complete with their marching band, the moldy figs and the old notes. The chic vermilion villains and the sinister puppeteer Uncle Emil, who rode around in a yellow bus with the puppets, a group of corncob marionettes, were all characters that never saw the light of day due to budget constraints. Three, casting challenges. The Croft brothers went to great lengths during casting. They exhaustively auditioned British youngsters for the title roles, even seeking advice from playwright Lionel Bart. Their primary focus was musical abilities. However, it wasn't until shooting began that they realized the importance of factoring and acting capabilities, which added an unexpected twist to the production. The Bugaloos continues to hold a special place in the hearts of fans, not just for its music and whimsy, but for the intriguing behind-the-scenes stories that make it a fascinating piece of television history. 
Intriguing and often overlooked, The Bugaloos remains a delightful slice of 1970s television, enriched by the hidden details that have emerged over the years. From dual-voiced characters to unexplored villains and casting challenges, this show offers a peek into the complexities of creating a beloved classic. The Bugaloos world is more captivating than you might have imagined. In 1970, the TV series The Bugaloos took flight, but not all was smooth for this insect-themed musical show. Despite The Bugaloos being signed to Capitol Records, their album and single For a Friend failed to buzz with success. This led to Capitol dropping the group from its artist roster in 1971. But The Bugaloos left its mark beyond the 70 seconds. Fast forward to October 1997, and the 30th issue of the Animaniacs comic book featured a spoof called the Warner Bugs. In this playful parody, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot transformed into flying insects and faced off against Wanda Weird. This spoof, taking direct jabs at the Bugaloo's songs and star Martha Ray, paid homage to the quirky charm of the original show. Interestingly, while the Bugaloo's were doing their thing, Lucille Ball was shooting Here's Lucy on a neighboring stage. She frequently dropped by the Bugaloo's set and became quite enamored by their distinctive wings. So, the Bugaloo's may not have soared as expected in the music industry, but it found its wings in the world of entertainment, leaving a lasting impression on fans and even catching the eye of Hollywood royalty. In the 1970 TV series The Bugaloos, there's an interesting backstory that connects it to another Sid and Marty Croft production, Puff Stuff. The title for The Bugaloos had already been brewing in the creators' minds. They had a character named Wichipu masquerading as Betsy Bugaloo in the film Puff Stuff. This early connection shows how ideas can percolate and evolve across different projects. Additionally, Martha Ray, a notable actress, played the role of boss witch in Puff Stuff. What makes this intriguing is that Sid Croft, one of the show's creators, was so taken with her performance that he decided to continue working with her on the Bugaloos. This decision didn't come without controversy, as his brother Marty Croft had concerns that Martha Ray's larger-than-life personality might cause issues on set. Nevertheless, Sid's admiration for her talent led to her involvement in the Bugaloos. Lastly, Billy Barty, who had a knack for drumming, had developed this skill in the 1930s for a vaudeville act he had with his sisters. This unique talent came in handy for the Bugaloos as he frequently took up the drums on the show. It's a testament to how diverse talents and experiences came together to create the entertaining world of the Bugaloos. In the world of television, these behind-the-scenes tidbits shed light on the creative process and collaborations that brought beloved series like The Bugaloos to life. In the 1972 V series The Bugaloos, there's an interesting tidbit about the set. Directly behind Benita Bazaar's jukebox, the place where the show's main villain hung out, was an abandoned set of the US Enterprise Bridge from Star Trek. Surprisingly, the Bugaloos, the show's main characters, like to chill there during their downtime on the set. This iconic connection between two vastly different shows may not be widely known. It's a testament to the creativity and resourcefulness of TV production during that era, where sets were often repurposed for different shows. The Bugaloos also had an interesting casting fact. Phil Collins, the renowned musician, was among the last three finalists for the role of IQ on the children's American television show. While he didn't ultimately land the part, it's intriguing to imagine a world where he was a Bugaloo. Lastly, it's worth noting that the Bugaloos marked the second series produced by Sid Croft and Marty Croft, following H.R. Puff Stuff. Interestingly, while H.R. Puff Stuff was shot on film, they switched to videotape for the Bugaloos to cut production costs and utilize the new chroma key visual effects technology of the time. These facts shed light on the behind-the-scenes aspects of a beloved 1970s TV series and the industry's innovation during that era. That's all for the intriguing details about the Bugaloos and its connection to Star Trek sets, Phil Collins' almost role, and the Croft Brothers' production choices. 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 From stardom to tragedy, the devastating impact of substance abuse on the Bugaloos' cast member in the world of vintage television. The Bugaloos was a colorful and whimsical 1970 TV series that left a lasting mark on pop culture. However, beneath the vibrant exterior of this beloved show, a tragic story unfolded for one of its cast members, illustrating the destructive power of substance abuse. For the uninitiated, The Bugaloos was a children's series that aired from 1970 to 1971. 
It revolved around a group of musical insect characters living in Tranquility Forest, battling the evil intentions of Benita Bazaar. The show was a hit, and the cast enjoyed fame and adoration from young viewers across the nation. Amidst the glittering lights of fame, the dark shadow of substance abuse loomed over one cast member, John Philpott. Philpott played the lovable, guitar-strumming beetle in the series. Unfortunately, the pressures of fame and the relentless public eye proved to be too much for him. As the show gained popularity, Philpott found himself engulfed in a whirlwind of parties and social gatherings. The expectations placed on him to maintain the Bugaloo's image, both on and off screen, led him down a perilous path. The use of drugs, initially for recreation, soon spiraled into addiction. Tragically, Philpott's battle with substance abuse ultimately led to his overdose. In 1976, at the age of 27, he succumbed to the devastating consequences of his addiction, leaving behind a legacy tainted by the harsh realities of stardom. The Bugaloos had brought joy to countless children, but it also serves as a stark reminder of the perils of fame and the destructive power of substance abuse. John Philpott's story is a cautionary tale, underscoring the importance of addressing the mental and emotional toll that fame can inflict on those who experience it. In the end, The Bugaloos remains a cherished piece of television history, but it also serves as a poignant reminder that behind the smiles and catchy tunes, there can be profound sadness and tragedy. And tragedy. As we draw the curtains on our journey through the whimsical world of the Bugaloos, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on the enchanting memories and cherished moments this timeless 1970 TV series has woven into the tapestry of your life. The Bugaloos was more than just a show, it was a portal to a world where imagination soared, music filled the air, and friendships were as enduring as the melodies that graced your ears. It transported us to a magical forest where four musical insect friends, joy, IQ, harmony, and courage, along with their bud-tasted companion Sparky, faced off against the cantankerous Bonita Bazaar. Together, they spun tales of courage, creativity, and camaraderie that left an indelible mark on our hearts. Perhaps you found yourself humming along to their catchy tunes, or maybe you admired their resilience in the face of adversity. Maybe the vibrant colors and whimsical costumes left you dreaming of your own adventures in the bud-filled world. Whatever it was that drew you into the Bugaloo's world, we'd love to hear about it. Share your favorite memories, your most cherished moments, or simply your thoughts on what made the Bugaloo's so special to you. Let's celebrate the enduring magic of this beloved series together. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic journey and for sharing your connection with the Bugaloo's. Your time and interest are greatly appreciated.